Okay, so today I'm actually doing a video. I got kind of inspired to do this video because I watched um, Jen Dent do a video about this. I think her, the title was The Teacher from Hell or something close to that. I will, ooh, there's dog hair. I will link her video and her channel down below or I might try to put it on screen, but I'll definitely have it down below. And I totally watch her all the time. I'm not really a person who comments a lot on the videos of the people that I follow, like the people that I watch every single video. I still don't really, it's not like I comment on every single video, but this just resonated so deeply with me. I even commented on that video that I've had experiences with coaches and te like teachers slash coaches, just like in the video that she was talking about. It's something that I've always thought about because I have never had a problem standing up for myself. Like from the, the day that I came out of my mother's womb, I never had a problem speaking up when something was wrong or when I didn't agree with something or when I saw, thought that something wasn't fair. I've never had a problem with that. But it has always been something that concerned me because people that I knew growing up were very shy and very scared of authority and would never stick up for themselves ever in any situation with peers, with adults, with anything. Even when they knew it was wrong or they didn't think it was okay, they wouldn't stand up for themselves. And it has always really terrified me to think about what could happen. And I know of things that have happened with basically authority figures taking advantage of somebody who doesn't stand up against authority figures because that's something that we're taught as young kids is to respect people who are older than you point blank period just because you were born before me doesn't mean that you automatically deserve respect that has never made sense to me anytime that i would speak my mind about something or disagree with an adult on something the first thing out of their mouth is you need to respect me i'm an adult and i'm like no 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 i will respect you when you deserve respect when you're being an asshole, I'm gonna tell you you're being an asshole. And I've never had a problem with that. And I know that there's so many people who do, and there's so many people who don't stick up for themselves. And it's just like a scary thing to me. But anyway, that was like super long-winded. So I wanna tell a couple of my experiences. It's not exactly the same as like Jen Dent's situation or like her story, but it's kind of under the same premise of like, people with authority, especially over young kids who don't use their authority the right way all the time. So to get into this story, okay, to give a little bit of a backstory before this, I've always been an athlete, like pretty much my entire life. Um, from like the day I can remember, I've been like in baseball or something, you know, I've been in a sport. And uh, I went to this certain middle school for seventh and eighth grade. This was still in a time where like, I just played every sport, so I played volleyball in seventh grade, and then basketball right after, and then soccer after that. But then, once eighth grade came around, so, okay, basically, I tried out for basketball, and like, a little bit, like, two or three games into the season, I decided that I hated basketball so much. Like, I don't like that, and the same kind of happened with soccer. I don't like those type of sports, that's just not my jam. I pretty much discovered that I don't really like sports where people are like all up in your business. So like basketball and soccer where your opponent is literally right there like trying to get something from you. I don't like that shit. So I I, I guess, well, I, I made the basketball team and then I decided that I didn't like it. But my parents didn't allow me to quit halfway through the season, which is understandable. You know, you start something and you finish it. Fine. So I finished the season and then was like, you know what, especially after soccer, I was like, yeah, this stuff just definitely isn't for me. Like, I don't like this. I told myself after those seasons, I was like, yeah, it's just not for me, but I really like volleyball. So next year, eighth grade, I'm just going to do volleyball and then go to regular PE after the season. Basically how, how my middle school worked is like, if you played a sport, then like during your PE hour, you would go and practice with your team. And if you weren't in a sport during your, pre, your PE hour, you would go with like the PE kids and like run on the track or play dodgeball or do whatever, or like learn about health. Like you would do stuff with like the regular PE class. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll just play the volleyball season. When it's over, I will just be a regular PE kid. Cool beans. So the volleyball season was over and then like 
basically the following week basketball tryouts were happening and so they told us if you're going to try out for basketball then go over to this certain gym we had like a practice gym and a game gym right next to each other so they're like if you're going to try out then go to the game gym if you're not going to try out then go to the practice gym so i went over to the practice gym because i knew i didn't want to play basketball so basically we were doing station oh station workout to where like there's five things and you like do 20 sit-ups and then you go to the next station and you do 10 push-ups and then you go to the next station and you do a 30 second plank and then you basically like that so how the stations worked was there was five stations inside and then you would go outside and you would just have to walk the track. So you walk one loop around the track and then you come back, do the five stations, go outside, walk around the track, come back inside, do five stations. So I did the five stations and then I go out to the track. So we had a, a lot of PE coaches. So there was like the people running the tryouts and then there was one coach inside and then one coach out at the track watching the people who were supposed to be walking. So I do the stations and then I go outside and the coach, so I go outside and I like, walk the track like I do a full loop around the track and I'm going to go back inside and the coach that was watching the track was like McQueen what are you doing out here and I was like I'm doing the PE stuff and she's like no 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 you're gonna play basketball and I was like no I don't want to do that so I'm gonna I'm gonna do PE stuff and she's like no 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 go inside and you're gonna try out for basketball and I was like no, really, like, I don't want to play. Like, we went back and forth, like, a few times. And I was like, no, really, like, I don't want to play basketball. Like, I don't, I don't like it. She literally said, no, 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 you're, you're too tall to not play basketball. And I was like, all right, whatever. So, um, I go inside, and during the tryouts, all I did was do layups. Like, I don't really know, like, what they consider to try out but I swear I just did layups for 30 minutes like don't fucking know I don't, I don't know so all I did was a bunch of layups and then the next day because it's just because I didn't want to argue with her anymore so the next day doing day two of tryouts and so the trial kids go over here and the PE kids go over here the second day I was like I'm a PE kid I don't want to fucking play basketball so I go over with the PE kids and the same coach was like what are you doing go to go to the basketball trial and I was like no I don't want to play basketball I don't want to and uh, a bitch got in trouble they had the vice principal, or she the principal, I can't really remember anymore, but um, they had the whoever, principal or vice principal, come talk to me, and that person tried to talk me into trying out. I, first, I got in trouble, I got in trouble, and got the, I'll just say the principal, to come talk to me, and um, I didn't have to go to the office, but they called her down to the gym, and I remember I was standing in the hallway, like, outside of where the gym was like the principal's literally talking to me in the hallway like why are you not listening to them blah 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 and I was like oh I don't want to play basketball I don't want to play basketball like why are you trying to force me to play a fucking sport that I don't want to play it's so dumb so I like argue with that woman and then finally and she said the same thing she was like but you're really tall and you're really athletic why don't you just play and I was like I like volleyball I don't like basketball or soccer, so I'm not gonna play them. Like, I don't give a fuck what you say. I didn't say those exact words, but I was, like, I didn't cuss at her or anything, but I was just like, I like volleyball. I don't wanna play basketball or soccer. I don't like them. And she finally gave up and was like, fine, like, just go play PE or whatever. So then I go home and I was like, I didn't, I wasn't upset about it because I knew that I was right in that situation. So I wasn't upset about it. And I had already told my mom the day before they made me do the tryout and I wasn't coming at it from like a place of being upset I was just like complaining that they made me do something I didn't do just like I would complain about my math homework like I was like oh can you freaking believe that like all I did was like laugh for 30 minutes mom like what the fuck that's so dumb and my mom was like yeah that is dumb are you gonna do tryouts tomorrow and I was like no so then the next day when I got in trouble, basically, I, t I came home and again, I was just complaining about it. I was like, mom, you will not believe it. they tried to make me go to tryouts again today. Like, I didn't want to. And then they called the freaking principal on me and the principal tried to make me go to tryouts. And my mom was like, excuse me? Like, the first day, my mom was basically like, well, that's okay. Like, maybe she'll just get it tomorrow that you don't 
you just don't want to play that sport. I wasn't really mad about it because I know that it's their job. Like sports are important a lot of the time or just being on a team in general, even if that's like being in theater or something like that, it is important for a young person growing up to be in team settings like that because it teaches you so many things. And I get that it's a teacher's place, basically. I mean, it is probably something that they're trained to do to not necessarily force you, but to encourage kids to try new things and get out of their comfort zone and be on team settings because it is so important to learn those fundamentals as a young kid. And I get that. But for them to get me in trouble and to call the principal on me because I didn't want to play a sport was like ludicrous. So my mom the next morning called the the office and they tried to like kind of give her the runaround like oh she's busy right now you have to make an appointment she's like oh, no 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 she harassed my child so let me talk to the vice principal right fucking now and so my mom my mom probably didn't like cuss her out or anything but my mom can cut you down quick she can make you feel this big this quick so Basically, my mom probably handed her her ass in a respectful way, but handed her her ass over the phone for like 10 to 15 minutes straight. And that day during the lunch period, because the vice principal and principal would normally walk around during the lunch periods and like talk to kids and like make sure shit wasn't going down. The, that lady, I can't, I really can't remember if she was the principal or vice principal, but it doesn't matter. She came up to me during like the lunch hour after I had gotten my tray of food and she apologized to me. It, it was kind of a big deal for me to stick up for myself when I thought that something wasn't right or I didn't want to do something. And I know from people that were my age at the time, when they heard about what I had said or done, they were like shocked that I did that or said that or whatever. And to me, I was always like, why is that so shocking? If you don't want to do something, you don't do it. And that that's like the whole hypocrisy for me is that adults when they talk about stuff that's really serious, like sexual assault, they say, oh, if no means no. And if you don't wanna do something, don't do it. If you feel uncomfortable, then leave. But then if that adult, which is kind of relates to my situation, at least in the first one, I didn't wanna do something, and they basically tried to force me to do it. But you're teaching me in other situations when somebody's trying to force me to do something I'm not comfortable doing, to say no and leave, but then, like, it didn't make sense to me, so I'm like, you're just a huge fucking hypocrite, and even as, like, an eighth grader, I knew that, and I was like, it, it, what? It really bothered me because I knew people who, like, played the sports because they didn't want to tell the coaches no, and they ended up, like, like, when they went to high school, they were like, I'm done with all sports because the middle school coaches and teachers kind of, like, tarnished that for them because they were forced to do things that they didn't want to do. And I think that is so sad that you stifle somebody's want to do something and you stifle their creativity and you stifle their fun so much that they just quit everything altogether. I think that is so fucked up. If you're ever in a situation similar to this, like, just don't let them do that. Like, it's, it's so fucked up. So the second situation happened when I was in high school and I was a sophomore or a junior. No, I was a junior because I drove myself to the place. Okay, actually when I was in high school, I lived in a big city and I went to a huge, huge high school. Our school district had a separate stadium basically for like football games and they had a separate like huge gym for varsity basketball games and volleyball games. I was either there watching a basketball game for my own school or I was there watching a volleyball game on a night that I wasn't playing. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but I feel like it was a basketball game. Anyway, so I was there and I was wearing like athletic shorts and a tank top and a sports bra. And I live in South Texas, like it's hot. That's what everybody wears. And it's like not school, you know, it's like after hours, it's like eight o'clock at night and we're not on like an actual school property, we're at like a stadium. At this point, I'm a civilian, okay? Like I'm not, this isn't a student, I'm not really at a school function. Yeah, I'm at a game, but like I got tickets to get in here, like I can wear whatever I want basically. So I'm wearing like athletic shorts, a sports bra and a tank top. And I was wearing a tank top <clears throat> that kind of like, scooped down pretty low but it wasn't a tank top that I cut myself it was like a razorback tank top like one of the flowy like athletic ones what like I was a fucking jock like what do you think I'm gonna wear on my time off 
athletic clothes, duh. So, and I probably was like, honestly coming from practice. So I was probably like sweaty and gross and I had just changed out of my practice shirt and had put on just like whatever tank top or whatever shirt I had. And it wasn't like that low. You know what? I have a shirt that is like very, like pretty much the exact same thing. I'm gonna show you how like not revealing this was. Excuse like my ugly ass bathroom, but this is like pretty much exactly the shit that I was wearing. Like it's not, the same clothes from high school, but basically I had a sports bra on. This, like a tank top, and like, it's not even low enough to show the skin under my bra, so what the fuck. And it was probably like the same length, and then I have like Nike, like Nike cover shorts on, like, like this is pretty much the exact outfit that I had on. I don't know if it's like technically a superintendent or whatever, like what her exact title was, but there was a woman who was basically in charge of all of the sports for the entire district. She basically went to like every sporting event, which makes sense, you know, cause that's like what her job has to do with. And I was going to like go to the bathroom and like get some candy or something or like a bag of Cheetos. And so I was walking to the concession stand with my friends. I knew who she was and like we made eye contact and I kind of was just like, hello, and then kept walking. I'm from the South, so you kind of do that to everybody. So I didn't really think anything of it. And then we get our stuff and we're walking back and I remember this, like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird to me. So um, we were walking back, and again, I'm with, like, two or three of my girlfriends, right? So she stops me, and then my friends stop with me. And we were all athletes, so I, we thought that she was going to stop and talk to all of us. But she looked at me and then looked at my friends and told them to go. She was like, y'all can, y'all can keep going, like, real, like, kind of rude. And I was, like, tight, like, what the fuck did I do now? I will admit, I was a little bit of a bad kid in high school. I was a little bit, I was definitely more mouthy than ever. <laughs> I really was, um, I wouldn't call myself disrespectful, but I also didn't always choose the right words and that goes for this altercation. But anyway, I digress. I'm, ch I'm super channeling De Jen Dent right now, so. And so my friends leave and this woman goes, you're gonna need to change your clothes or find something to cover up with. And again, I'm, I'm sick of these fucking people when they talk to me doing all this hand motions to add to what they say, just like in my fucking rude ass lady at Walmart story. She was like, you're gonna need to find something to like cover up with. And I was straight up like, why? And she was like, um, you're out of dress code. Bitch, what fucking dress code does the public have? Basically to not be naked. So what the fuck are you saying to me? So what I said was, and again, I don't agree with this, but it is what I said. I'm fully admitting it. I said, I don't have to do shit. And I walked away, which is not right. It was true, but it wasn't the right thing to say. And that was like kind of my problem in high school where like, <clears throat> There's one thing to like stand up for yourself and then there's one thing to like cuss at somebody when it's unnecessary because I feel like that can tend to escalate situations to a place where they never needed to go. All I really needed to say was, we're not at school or there's no dress code here. I'm, I pay to get into this place so you can't tell me what I can and can't wear. I could have said any of those things, but instead I looked her dead in the eye and said, I don't have to do shit and I walked away. <laughs> So, but still, like, who are you? What the fuck do you think you're telling me? Like, I didn't get in trouble for it, again, because I knew, and like, this was kind of what I talked about in the comment on Jen Den's video, is that when I stood up for myself, when I said what I said, however much I don't agree with it now, or the way that I said it now, that woman could not get me in trouble. Because if she went to like her boss or somebody else who was equal to her and said, or if she came to like the people at my, my school, if she came to like my head coach or something at my school, um, because she probably knew that I played volleyball there. If she came to the volleyball coach and was like, your athlete did this, such and such, so she needs to get suspended. She knew that she couldn't do that because she knew that she was wrong in the first place. And she knew that she should have never, ever told me to go change because she did not have the authority to do that. But if I was anybody else that I knew at the time, if I was any of the girls that I was even walking with, they would have said, okay, yeah, I'll go change right now.
and they would have been terrified to tell her no, even though she had absolutely no authority to tell us what we could and couldn't wear in that situation. And that's the shit that pisses me off so much. I don't know if this is like a saying that everybody has heard, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. How many things has she gotten away with? You know that she's done that to so many other people and they have not told her no. What if that woman gets away with that a hundred times in a row? Then the next time something comes around, she's gonna think, well, I've gotten away with this this many times. Let's push the button a little. Let's let's push the limits a little bit. See what else I can get away with. And let's see what else I can get away with. And because she has just enough authority and she picks on just the right people, a fucking high school student, and she gets away with it just enough times, she she's going to think she's fucking untouchable. Not this person specifically, but just people like that in general. You know, that's why you see that happen. You see something super illegal happen and then people start coming out of the woodwork like, oh yeah, they did this to me 10 years ago. She'd said this to me five years ago. She said this to me a year ago. She said this to me then. And then you see that it's a pattern of behavior when it needs to stop way back here when she first said something wrong. That's like my biggest beef with situations like this is because it's not that it would have scarred me for life if I had put on a different shirt. It's that that would have been a stepping stone for her to fuck up somebody else's life a year from now because she thinks that she could get away with it or whoever it was you think you can get away with it because you've gotten away with this for so long let's see if we can push the envelope and push it some more until I finally get in trouble because I did something really really fucked up that actually did hurt somebody and hurt them for a long time I, mean, I don't think anybody's gonna figure out like who I'm talking about from what I've said and that and that's like not even the point it's not to like go harass these people or to talk shit about these specific people it's just about these types of situations where authority figures abuse their authority and kind of like Jen Dent, it's not like it was super traumatizing or like it affects you lifelong, but it might, you know? You don't know how far they'll take it with somebody who doesn't stand up for themselves. You don't have to cuss at adults, you don't have to just disrespect every single adult around you, but you also don't have to respect people who don't deserve respect. You don't have to listen to authority figures if they're telling you something that's a blatant lie or if they're just trying to press their authority on you. So if you take anything from a story like this, just know that there's a time to stand up for yourself. And it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how big the age gap is, if they're wrong, they're wrong. It's like, much as you don't want to disappoint the people around you, like a coach or a teacher, if they're wrong, they're wrong, okay? And at the end of the day, you're still gonna have your dignity and you're gonna have just found somebody who just doesn't deserve your respect anymore. And as disappointing as that is, you know, it is what it is. It doesn't matter. I don't think that adults give a lot of credit to younger people for being able to identify what is wrong and right and who deserves respect and who doesn't just because you're 50 or 60 or however fucking old you are doesn't automatically mean that you're wiser than me it doesn't automatically mean that you deserve respect because i know so many people who are in their fucking 70s and 80s and 90s who are bitter at the world who didn't ever learn a thing and they're terrible people and they don't deserve respect and have never grown as a person and have never taken life lessons to heart. I'm, there's people like out there in the world and there's unfortunately people like that who have authority over people who are teachers and who are coaches and who are people's bosses and they don't deserve respect and they are not gonna always be right. So not that I want you to walk around with a huge chip on your shoulder or anything like that, but I do want you to be able to walk around knowing and being able to identify when something's wrong, it's wrong. And when you need to stand up for yourself, when you see something, say something. Even if you're like shaking in your boots and your knees are knocking and your voice is shivering, just say it. I will be linking Jen Dent's video down below and her channel. Go check out Jen Dent. She is the shit. Jen motherfucking Dent. Okay, go buy some of her merch. She's amazing. Go give her a follow. Definitely. Like, she's so freaking cool. Um, I do upload every Tuesday and Saturday, so keep a lookout for that. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Go give me a follow on Instagram. If you like these story time videos, I know a lot of people say that they like the videos where I just sit down and talk about stuff, so I hope that you like this video. Um, other than that, I think we're good to go, so wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just have a good one. Bye!